Well, joining me to discuss the election and Angola's prospects is Anne Pitcher. She's Professor of African Studies and Political Science and a faculty associate in the Center for Political Studies at the University of Michigan. Welcome, Anne. Thank you for having me on. Now, how would you describe this economy that the next Angolan president will be inheriting? Well, he's inheriting an economy that's still highly dependent on oil in spite of efforts to diversify. The uh, previous uh, president um, did not go very far with that effort, and so it's still highly dependent on oil, um, which uh, produces a great problem for the incoming president. So what do we know about the incoming president's plans then when it comes to tackling this issue of diversifying the economy? Well, that's going to be a key issue on the agenda is to figure out how to, to diversify the economy. They created a, a sovereign wealth fund um, where they were going to park part of the revenues from the oil, um, say, from oil sales, and they were going to save that money for a rainy day. Well, this is the rainy day, and they need to start spending that money on diversifying the Angolan economy. However, it doesn't seem that they have sufficient funds to really um, make the kinds of investments in the economy they need to make. Now, for everyday Angolans, what would you say are the major economic issues that are really weighing on their minds this election? Um, ordinary Angolans are having a very tough time at the moment with the drop in the price of oil. Um, the value of the Kwanzaa has dropped. And with the drop in the value of the Kwanzaa, um, imports and therefore the prices of food and ordinary basic items have just skyrocketed. So inflation is rampant and ordinary Angolans cannot afford basic items like food and clothing. Um, the average Angolan um, lives on about $3 a day. So they're very worried about um, their salaries, about uh, getting jobs, about trying to get out of poverty. And this is particularly true for areas outside of the capital, uh, Luanda. Now, we know that the ruling party's candidate and the current defense minister is actually a front runner at the moment. What would his win mean in terms of where Angola goes from here? Would it be more of the same, or can we expect some changes? Well, I think um, it's a historic moment for Angola, obviously, because um, they haven't um, voted for a new uh, leader in uh, many years. The, many Angolans have only ever known the presidency of Jose Eduardo dos Santos. So for them, uh, it's a historic moment because no matter who wins, and it probably will be uh, the candidate for the current ruling party, the Movement for the Liberation of Angola, um, it will probably be uh, Joao Lorenzo, but uh, for them, it's just a historic moment because they've never known any other leader. Now, whether they can um, expect big changes is, is questionable. I think ordinary Angolans will have to continue to pressure the government uh, to make uh, major changes to the economy and to generate more employment. Now, one of the country's biggest investors, China, we did see that they pulled out pulled out a lot of businesses when the commodity crunch came, obviously took a lot of wealth with it. How does that relationship stand now between Angola and China? Well, that's a tough one. They have been very close. Um, they have many joint partnerships and joint ventures in oil, in finance, in construction. And as you pointed out, uh, many of those projects ground to a halt with the drop in the price of oil in 2015. China at one point had 200,000 workers in Angola, and um, the number of workers they have now is around 50,000. So this has really affected uh, Chinese workers, uh, but also it's affected um, the construction projects that were taking place um, in many parts of Angola, but especially in Luanda. Um, as you know, um, there was a civil conflict in Angola that lasted most of the presidency of Jose Eduardo dos Santos. It only ended in 2002. And when oil prices were high, the Angolan government was able to invest in a lot of construction projects, particularly in residential um, construction. And so China was very important with regard to that effort. 
and those have all ground to a halt now. Well, we'll see what happens with this election if things turn around. Thank you so much, Dr. Ann Pritcher, Professor of African Sorry. Studies and Political Science at the University of Michigan.